Hey folks, welcome to Steve's Thoughts and Adventures. I'm traveling this week, so I'm going to introduce our guest host for this, this segment. But today I found an old friend here on a bench who reminded me uh, for the next chapter on intentional growth. The famous saying this guy once said, doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result, it never works. So please welcome Stuart Mason, Dr. about intentional growth. Thanks, Steve. Um, good morning. Um, Welcome to Steve's vacation blog. Um, I'm going to build upon um, Steve's um, last blog around intentional growth. And it's something I touched on um, during our last um, all hands call as well. So hopefully, hopefully as we talk more about this, it'll become more familiar uh, with you. Why is intentional growth um, important to us? Organizations can grow simply by just adding revenue to the bottom line. Or growth can be intentional. Companies that achieve intentional growth experience a journey uh, very different to, to companies that don't. And it can be very purposeful. Actually, it can be very powerful and rewarding as well if you actually make a choice um, to, to take a certain path versus, you know, being, I guess, being kind of dictated by. That journey can be very enjoyable. I've certainly spent quite a, a big part of my career trying to create paths um, that I find more rewarding, but you know, fit a little bit more towards my core values and my purpose. And I think the big thing that you know I've always found, you know, we see here at CSM is distinguishes us in the marketplace. It, it makes us more more sticky with our clients and more credible. How are we going to pursue intentional growth here at CSM? Intentional growth is about having clear goals, you know, creating the, the, the strategy, the, the, the path that we want to follow, um, and really aiming to hit those growth orientated targets. But it's got to be over a certain time frame. Um, and, you know, and it, the walking, you know, the walking has to be purposeful for us and, and actually quite deliberate. But, you know, as we keep moving forward, um, the challenges that we will face, we will keep adapting to that strategy. Um, but it's important that we remain on that course. As we've previously discussed, CSM is focused pursuing opportunities around a series of three high growth markets. These three, three high growth markets, which hopefully you're all familiar with now are, are technology, food and beverage, and life sciences. Some of you might be asking, why these markets? And, and actually that's a really, really good question. Well, firstly, all of these markets have a high barrier to entry. So what does that mean? It means that to, to actually earn the right to play in those markets, you know, it's, it's very high, it's specialized. Um, you've got to have the right experience and the right, really the right credibility and capability to perform there. The, once you're in these markets, these markets are very recession resistant. There's huge, strong tailwinds in all of these markets, and I'll explain why in, in a second. And just as an example, you know, one of one of our clients um, in in the life sciences market, um, we managed over two hundred and twenty million dollars worth of projects. So our pursuit around this client has been very intentional, very purposeful, and the opportunities that's provided for us, um, our colleagues, um, and teammates and partners has been incredible. And when you think about it, you know, that, that particular um, client, a particular market actually is a really good fit to our core values and purpose as well. Now we're currently building very intentionally on the back of that client, not only to expand that portfolio, but now target other high barrier entry clients um, to expand that market. So let's go back to those three markets just for a second. So why technology? Over the weekend, if you have five minutes, I would urge you to go Google the Federal CHIPS program. Um, when you look at that program, it will blow your mind on how much money is being invested by our federal government, so our federal taxes, um, into reshoring uh, that CHIPS program, that technology that really underpins just about everything um, that we need to survive today. We've broken into that market um, over the course of 22, and we'll be building upon that in 23. Food and beverage, certainly through, throughout my whole career, when, you know, when thing goes, things go a little south, 
I've been through, I guess, three recessions now and a, and a pandemic. Um, one market stands strong amongst all others is food and beverage. You know, the, the consumer, all of us, um, in, in times of, of stress, um, lean back towards food and beverage. And um, so, so that market will always be there. It will always be present. And, um, you know, we will always have um, great opportunities there. And then finally, life sciences. Um, what the pandemic showed to most of the Western world was the fragility that we had in our, in our life sciences pharmaceutical supply chain. Um, and I'll give you a couple of examples, but, but really on the back of, of the pandemic, there, there is strong tailwinds, huge investment going into all Western countries, including the United States and pharmaceuticals. And we are very well positioned to take advantage of that. So one of the examples was, you may recall, um, probably mid-pandemic when, um, when there was a huge demand for, um, for really for all of the hand sanitizers. Most distilleries and, and most companies out there were producing it, um, but there was still a, a, a massive s a shortage of it. And this was down to the fact that there was no packaging. So, so like most Western countries in Europe and North America, we rely heavily on Asia for our packaging material and um, we just couldn't get it. So we could, so we could make you know, trillions of gallons of hand sanitizer, but there was nothing to put it in. So, um, you know, so that was really a breakdown in that kind of global supply chain that crippled the Western world. Um, so you know, that's one of many examples on why there is a huge reshoring in, across the whole manufacturing sector. You know, we're very, very strongly positioned to be able to take advantage of all of that. Another, another great story that I saw, this was probably my second recession um, in the food and beverage sector was I got a phone call one day from, from a client in a complete panic wanting to spend $20 million on a new packaging facility because literally overnight the consumer's buying pattern shifted. So, so pre-recession, um, they, were, they were a drinks company, they were selling 80% of their product um, in single containers, so single bottles or, ca or canisters that you you know you would buy in the store or pick up at a gym, um, and literally overnight, and then sorry, the remaining twenty percent was in multi packs that you would get at a Costco or Sam's Club. Literally overnight, the market shifted from to ninety percent multi packs. People decided can't afford to buy the premium single pack and I'm going to go to our Costco and buy multi-packs. But the whole packaging, packaging strategy then had to shift. 20 million investment. And that was really, you know, an example upon example of, you know, that kind of shift in that, that food and beverage sector that, that just keeps investing irrespective of what happens in the market. They're great um, sectors to work in, and they're very rewarding. So these are some just some of the reasons why we're going to, you know, we're going to continue to be very intentional and grow our business um, around these three high growth markets. So I'm going to I'm going to look at my notes here and just and just to finish off and just and just kind of quote some um, from from a book, John Maxwell's book um, on on why you know and how you can support intentional growth. So in John Maxwell's book. Um, the 15 invaluable laws of growth. John Maxwell talks about the shift from accidental growth to intentional growth. Do you plan to start things tomorrow or do you insist on starting them today? Do you play it safe or take risks? Do you depend on good luck or do you rely on hard work? So the key to growth isn't a secret. The key is intentional. Make a conscious choice to align your purpose and values with your actions will allow you to unlock true potential. So, so just to, con to conclude today's vlog, I'm just gonna refer back to one of Steve's uh, previous comments around 2023 really being a year of intention for us. Also the markets that I've been talking about this morning um, also refer back to our kind of strategic plan. Intentional growth is one of our, you know, one of our strategic pillars and really underpins our, our, our values and, and purpose as an organization. 
on future vlogs, we're going to be unpacking and peeling back and going deeper into just some of the tactics we're going to apply um, as we kind of move forward um, in 2023. Thank you and have a great Super Bowl weekend.